Thank you. Uh, Marjorie, thank you for your work, your efforts. Uh, there's no better contrast between what happened in the summer of 2020 and what happened January 6th than the issue of bail. Uh, we hear for many people that participated in destroying federal building, police buildings, uh, looting, then that they had no bail, so they were immediately allowed to be released, and yet we've got people in the D.C. jail who had no bail, meaning they can't get out. Now, on the state side, having been a felony judge, you had to have done something incredibly extreme to have bail so high that you could not make it, uh, especially a no-bail situation. It's just so extremely rare. But to have that kind of dichotomy uh, here in the nation's capital is pretty outrageous. Uh, we know, for those that are still taught any type of uh, uh, civics, of government, you know that under our system, you are innocent until proven guilty. And the law and the Constitution have made very clear you're not to punish anyone who's in pretrial confinement. Pretrial confinement is not a place for punishment. That can only come after conviction. And yet here what we've seen in the D.C. jail amounts to a great deal of punishment. And to be clear, it's not just the inmates that have suffered. Uh, as Marjorie and I toured the D.C. jail, some of the conditions were so astounding, I, I've asked more than one guard, if, have you ever worked in a facility that had these kind of problems? And quietly they would say, never, no. It is outrageous. Now, there are some that say, oh, it's just because you've not been in jails or prison. You don't know. This is what it's like. No, those people that said that have not witnessed what's been going on in the D.C. jail. Uh, first, we have heard repeatedly since January 6th, this was an armed insurrection. And as I asked Merrick Garland, and I've asked others, you know, is there anybody been charged with insurrection? And the answer is actually no. No one has been charged with insurrection. Uh, in fact, if they were going to charge with someone with insurrection, it's beginning to sound more and more like those would be agents for the federal government that were there stirring things up, trying to get people to engage in violence. And as we heard this weekend, uh, apparently a guy that was given out what were later used uh, are called dangerous weapons uh, may well himself have been working for the federal government, for the FBI, as he was handing out what they now charge were deadly weapons. So we've got a lot more investigating to do. Uh, the condition of solitary confinement has been so often struck down as inappropriate and yet the D.C. jail has gotten away with it uh, for such things as how dare you demand to talk to your lawyer in person because now we will have to put you in solitary confinement, we'll call it quarantine, for two weeks. It's bad enough what they're suffering from, but to discourage the ability to talk to your attorney, and what we saw as we go in the building, they got a great facility there. They're the plexiglass, the phones on either side, you could see your attorney, and it wouldn't require anything after the visit other than wiping down the phone and the area where they were. And yet they have used this idea, oh, if you're going to talk to your, your attorney, we're going to have to lock you up in solitary for 14 days. This is the kind of punishment that they have had meted out to them, and it really has to stop. And we know the U.S. Marshal, when 
they finally had had enough. We didn't know that they were going. We didn't know immediately after they went. But they had gotten concerns about the facility. They go in. They do a certain... Well, they're taken in to the area where the other prisoners were held, not the January 6th. And that gave them time to scrub off mold and try to clean up the area where the January 6th inmates were. And they did that. They had enough time to get some of the nastiest parts cleaned up so that the U.S. Marshal held that the cleaner side of the jail was not adequate and those 400 people needed to be shipped out to incarceration in Pennsylvania. And then by the time they get over to where the January 6th folks were, it was cleaner and they let that go. Then after that, before we went over for an inspection, for a tour, they uh, had done some painting and uh, had allowing them two hours outside their solitary confinement. Uh, one of the older gentlemen there, um, he's alleged to have had a gun, and I know the Attorney General Garland was either being dishonest or he let us know that he's incompetent. When I asked him, was anybody inside the Capitol found to have had a gun? And he knew the answer. I knew the answer. And yet he said, in fact, uh, well, I'm not sure where it was, but I know uh, there was a gun found. Well, and that's one of the reasons they're keeping this elderly gentleman in jail. Uh, you look at his hand, and it's obviously dark. Looks like it's going toward gray or black. Uh, you know, that's normally leading toward amputation when it gets that bad. But they haven't given him proper medical care. Another inmate had his finger going just sideways at the last joint. He said it was broken by one of the guards and they won't allow him to get uh, medical care for that. There are just all kinds of things there. Uh, the refusal to allow them to have haircuts or shave it, it, they're creating people that look like the unabomber and i know from my experience uh if a jail facility will not allow an inmate to prepare for court so that uh, he's not brought in looking like a criminal then that jail facility is going to be sanctioned by the judge that uh, in whose court they're brought None of those things are happening. We've got one judge, uh, Judge Lambert, that has started to take action, but there's not nearly enough. Uh, we need all of the videos that anybody has, but it's the federal government. I don't understand why our speaker is trying to hide evidence while they run around looking for anything that might help them make Republicans look bad. Um, but uh, I do, we did get a clue from uh, finding this tweet by the deputy, uh, our deputy warden, Deputy Warden Landerton, two years ago, in response to this tweet, uh, had this to say. What she thinks should be done with people who support Trump. Uh, she said it two years ago, and she's been carrying out what she said ever since she, these people were admitted to jail. These people need to be relieved of their duty. She's the one that, uh, when the four of us went up there to try to do a tour of the jail, uh, we were lured outside, and then she runs around back in and lock the door to the main lobby where people come in. So there are people that are in charge that should not be. They're, the inmates are being mistreated. And as somebody that's been a prosecutor, a felony judge, and a member of the crime subcommittee ever since I've been here, I've toured, I'm telling how many jails and prisons. And it's just hard for me to believe federal judges are allowing this to go on right here. It is a bad omen for the country that this is happening. And at this time, I would like to yield to my friend from Florida, Congressman Gates.